Um, I, I really love the simplicity of this training and I love the, the clarity that I have in each moment about how I'm going to use my intelligence. And I see that in, in each moment I just have a, a really simple choice, fundamental choice about how I'm going to use this incredible potency of mind. And um, the choice that I was, um, had practiced for many years before I met the training was victimizing myself. <laughs> and um, the way that I would victimize myself would be to have a thought come up, or an emotion or a sensation, it's the same mechanism. And um, immediately I'd need to work out, well, what, what do I do with this thought, this emotion, this experience, this sensation? And what, what do I do with it? And, um, and I'd learnt these ways of, you know, trying to deal with life, you know, how do I manage life, how do I go about things, how do I relate with people. And uh, it, it's amazing to have it broken down into these three simple ways that I can, I can either indulge that thought, which means to follow after it um, kind of blindly, either acting something out or this obsessive thinking about something. Um, I can avoid the thought, the emotion or the sensation, and I had all kinds of strategies for avoiding certain things that made me feel uncomfortable. I would try and numb them down. I would avoid certain people or certain places that seemed to bring up sort of uncomfortable sensations or thoughts that I didn't like. Or I can try and replace the thought, the emotion or the sensation um, with one that I'd like better. And um, what I see with all of these approaches is that what I was actually doing was trying to substantialize something that actually had no substantial nature of its own. And so we can see this in the law of impermanence. We can see that there's no way we can hold on to any thought, emotion or sensation. You can't hold on to the thought that you're having right now. You probably can't even quite define what the thought is you're having quite now. And yet by describing it in these ways, indulging, avoiding and replacing, by trying to do something with it, what we're trying to do is to give it this independent nature, this substance of its own. And, um, and that's the way that I've just been going about my life. And I saw that the results of that were um, that life was difficult. Yeah, it, was, it was always a struggle. It always seemed like a struggle. And um, <laughs> and the completely unpredictable nature of life meant that um, I always had to be on guard because I never knew what was going to come up next. I had to sort of be carefully monitoring everything that was going on for me, everything that was going on for other people and continually adjusting based on my um, indulgence, avoidance or replacement of what was going on. You know, am I happy with this situation? Do I like this conversation? If yes, okay, we'll carry on. <clears throat> if no, okay, what needs to change? Am I still happy with it? No, now I'm bored, so what needs to change? I'll leave this conversation or this place or this relationship. And just a constant, total preoccupation with my descriptions about what was going on. And then to come to the Balanced View training and to be given the introduction to the nature of mind and uh, just to be given the invitation, just to s stop thinking for a moment. And notice what remains. There's an alertness, there's a cognizance, there's the capacity to know. There's something that is aware of the next thought as it just spontaneously arises. And um, this, this was incredible for me. It was just absolutely mind-blowing because I saw that for the whole of my life there had been this cognizance, this openness of intelligence and it had been there the whole time and I'd never noticed. I'd, I'd never noticed. I like the, um, the imagery that sometimes you get in the, the cartoon of you know, there's a little cartoon character and he turns round and can't can't see the, the the huge creature that's behind him because it's so enormous that it fills the whole of the perception but not seeing it's there and it was the same for me with the recognition of uh, awareness or open intelligence and um, and then I was given this simple practice of well for short moments just just stop the describing stop the um, indulging stop the replacing stop the avoidance and just just allow your mind to rest naturally and see for yourself 
if open intelligence is always naturally present and the basis of whatever you're experiencing. And so that's what I did. I wanted to see whether that was true or not. And um, I tested that and I found that it was true. Every single time, there it was, blazing the obvious as the basis of my experience. I just had a habit of focusing in on the descriptions so that I know, knew whether to indulge, avoid or replace them. And here was a new approach where instead of doing any of these things, I could simply allow everything to be as it was for a moment. And what happened was that this, this, this incredible potency of mind, rather than being indulged in this, this constant activity with the descriptions, arranging them, trying to make them look the way that I thought they should look, was suddenly wide open and clear, seeing everything as it actually was and available to be used in any way that I chose. This was incredible because um, I'd always wanted to be smarter, I'd wanted to be more relaxed, I wanted to be more confident, I wanted to understand the nature of reality. And here it was for me to recognize instantaneously and immediately. So there could be nothing that was easier than that. This simple instruction communicated by um, somebody that had complete assurance in that. But the habit of collapsing into the descriptions was something that was so strong because I've been practicing it for decades. So even this short moment that illuminated everything with its original brilliance, it slipped away again, just, just, just like everything else with this law of impermanence. So the instruction was to repeat a short moment. But to do more than that, to show up in an environment where everything reminded me that I had this choice. Because <laughs> in conventional society and in the life I was living, nobody else was making this choice. Everybody else was so consumed with their descriptions, also not noticing this enormous, vast expanse of open intelligence that was the basis of all of them. So the brilliance of Candice to see, from the perspective of complete recognition, what is required and what will support everybody else to make this their own lived reality in every single moment of their lives. And this is the basis of the creation of the Balanced View Training and what we call the Four Mainstays. So it is so, so simple. If you want to gain confidence in open intelligence in all aspects of your life, follow the instructions of the Four Mainstays, regardless of what you think about them. Oh, <laughs> how's that for a button pusher? <laughs> That's the best advice. And it doesn't matter what you think about it. It doesn't matter whether you like it. It doesn't matter whether you agree with it. What you can do is you can test it out and see what the results are. Because all of the other descriptions, guess what? They're just descriptions, fleeting appearances, subject to the law of impermanence. Sometimes I love sitting in a plastic chair, listening to the training. Other times I really don't. Is that really the point of me coming here to work out whether I'd like to sit in a plastic chair or not? <laughs> but this is a really uh, a perfect example of our habit of focusing in on the descriptions and then basing our decisions on these. And they're changing all of the time. And um, it is fascinating to really discover that open intelligence is always present. And um, it's, it's so easy to demonstrate. If you just stop thinking for a moment again, there's that alertness. There's something that's aware of everything that's going on. And it doesn't need to be thought into existence. There's no cause for it. It's just simply there. Now, to prove it's there the whole of the time, can you turn off your ability to be aware right now, please? <laughs> Go on, turn it off. <coughs> Try and not be aware of everything that's going on around you right now. You can't do it. So this is really powerful to recognize because what we're getting familiar with is the actual nature of reality, what is stable and constant and the basis of all of these ever-changing descriptions. And um, when I was introduced to this practice and to open intelligence, then um, 
and to see the ways that I had avoided so many things in my life, all of these strategies that I had, and now making the choice, instead of using the strategies to just to rely on open intelligence, then um, in some circumstances and in some relationships, the intensity of experience that I felt was just far more than anything that I'd ever experienced before. And without the support, without being able to go to a trainer and to say, this is just crazy, this is so intense, this, this, surely this is a sign that there is something wrong, because I've never experienced um, jealousy like this, I've never experienced self-doubt like this, I've never experienced anger like this, you know, this, this can't be right. And then to have the trainer say to me, that's a good sign. That's a sign that you are allowing everything to be as it is. And this is also why the support is so necessary. Why that there is, um, there is the need for this constant um, encouragement to continue on. Because the habit again of collapsing into the descriptions and believing that they have this independent nature and power and giving away our power to these descriptions it's just so strong and we've practiced it for so long the recognition of, of open intelligence is always always simple it's always instantaneous with the current moment perception but it might not always feel easy when the data are really strong and intense and so for myself I, I, I quite quickly after trying to do it on my own for a while and having some success and some abject failure realized that I actually needed support with this. I really did. And, and that was the most powerful recognition that I had. And it wasn't a sign of my weakness or my failure. This was actually a sign of my stability and my um, becoming comfortable with everything about myself. I didn't need to prove myself. I'm open intelligence. What do I need to prove anything to? I'm open intelligence that can see what will be of most benefit in each particular time, place and circumstance, including what will be of most benefit to me to train up this capacity, to access these powers of great benefit, to express this wisdom in everything that I do and I say and that I am. That, that's what I want from life. And if that's what I'm really serious about, then I know where I can find the support.